Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Paul, for five minutes. I uh, misread my chart here, Mr. Paul. Uh, thank you. Um, I have two quick points I want to make. I want to restate the point I made earlier about uh, credit not really being capital. And I think that's an important point to make because we, we work on the illusion that if we can create credit unions at the Federal Reserve System, inject them into the banking system, we have capital. And I maintain that capital only can come from hard work and savings. And I think that's an important distinction. Also, Will the gentleman suspend? If members are leaving the vote, please do it quietly out of consideration for the members who are asking questions. Let me repeat to my colleagues on uh, leaving the room, please hold your conversations till you leave. The gentleman may continue. Also, I wanted to make a point about uh, a definition of inflation. You talked about inflation un being under control, but uh, to me and the free market economists believe inflation is increasing the supply of money and credit, and sometimes it leads to higher prices in, their, in, in an unpredictable fashion. And uh, therefore, if we concentrate on only on the prices, then we don't look at the real culprit, and the culprit is the increase in the supply of money of credit, and obviously that is sky high right now when you think about what's happened in the past year. If, uh, if, if increasing the supply of money of credit and low interest rates uh, uh, was a panacea, we should have seen some, uh, some results. But uh, in the past year, we have done a lot to stimulate the economy, and not much has happened. Uh, in the last 12 months, the national debt has gone up $1.5 trillion. And uh, if you add up what we have spent in the Congress plus what you have injected and guaranteed, it's over $9 trillion, and nothing seems to be helping. But I think our problems start a lot, soon, a lot uh, sooner than just last year. I believe they really started in the year 2000, and we were able to, with the help of the, of the Federal Reserve and some housing programs, to re-inject and to once again inflate the bubble. But uh, the market really never recovered. Uh, true job growth never existed in the past uh, eight or nine years. And, uh, and now we're suffering the consequences because it's a failed policy and, and, and it's, not, uh, it's not working at all. And we don't change anything. We, if we got in this trouble because we had low interest rates, getting businessmen and savers to do the wrong thing, just doing more of the wrong thing continuously, I can't see how this is going to be helpful. My question to you, Mr. Chairman, is this. Um, what will it take for you to say to yourself, um, could I be wrong? You know, what if I'm mistaken? You know, uh, how long is this going to go on? Nine trillion dollars? What if, say, in five years from now, we're in a deep, deep slump with your definition of inflation? What if we have high prices going and the economy is very, very weak and unemployment is high? Would you say to yourself then, boy, maybe I really messed up. Maybe I was on the wrong track. Maybe the free market people were right. Maybe Keynes was wrong. Would you ever consider that, or are you absolutely locked in to your beliefs? I, I'm always open to, uh, to changing my mind when the facts change, absolutely. Um, I mean, first I'll agree with you about credit and liquidity. The Federal Reserve has the capacity to provide liquidity against lend short-term lending against uh, collateral. We cannot provide capital. We understand the distinction. And that's why the TARP and these other programs have been important. Obviously, the best time of ki kind of capital is private capital, and that's the objective, is to get the financial system in a condition that private capital will come back in. I would view one very important mark of success would be that private capital was coming off the sidelines, as uh, Congressman Back has mentioned, and back into the financial system. In terms of the overall approach, I, I think I do have some uh, historical uh, uh, evidence on my side. There have been many, many examples in the past of financial crises having very substantial negative effects on the economy. Um, the uh, economy has not recovered in many of those cases until the financial situation was stabilized. We know, broadly speaking, what's needed. We need clarity about the asset positions of the banks. We need sufficient capital. We need sufficient liquidity. Um, we need to take other steps to ensure uh, regulatory um, oversight is, is appropriate. Um, we are working along a – we're not completely in the dark. We're working along a, uh, um, a, a program that has been applied in various contexts, obviously not in identical contexts, in other countries at other times. And so we're not, we're not making it up. We know, we know, broadly speaking, what needs to be done. Now, of course, if it doesn't work, we'll have to ask ourselves why not and to address it with other approaches. But. Uh, uh, we, we do have a plan here, and I think it's going to work if it's applied consistently. But, you, but uh, you don't think there's any point where you might say maybe we went the wrong direction? 
I mean, what would have to happen well, for you to do we, that? Is there anything? I'm telling you, uh, Congressman, I don't believe we'll have an inflation problem in terms of consumer prices. If that turns out to be wrong, then I will yep. concede that. You know, that. some people, excuse me, some people think we, the Depression ended with, when World War II uh, started. And, uh, of course, others believe it never ended until the end of World War II when all the bad debt and the malinvestment was liquidated and, and consumer demands uh, returned. Do you adhere to the fact that the Depression ended? The gentleman's time has expired. Um, you used up some of my time, remember? But who did? <laughs> never no, they start when you start. Uh, we will break for the vote. We will come back.